general relativity, step by step. We've been talking about black holes, and I made the observation that in the Einsteinian view, we have this peculiar length scale here, gm over c squared. And of course, if c equals 1, we've got this gm here in, um, in relativistic units. OK. Well, let's start thinking about how we might specify a metric tensor. If we have a metric tensor in flat space, we've been using minus dt squared plus dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. That's the line element uh, in units in which, excuse me, in units in which c equals one. Uh, well, we may as well write it in spherically symmetric coordinates plus dr squared plus. Let's get this right. This is just flat space in uh, the spherical coordinates. We've got dr squared. We need a r squared d theta squared plus r squared sine squared theta d uh, phi squared. So this is absolutely standard coordinates. I'm just going to consider sort of uh, a very crude drawing here, and then we move around by angle phi. Yeah, that's right. It's a very, very poor drawing there. Uh, yeah, very poor drawing indeed. But I've got to, uh, I've got the internet to help, of course. Uh, and if I just click on this, here's one I prepared earlier. Well, I didn't prepare it, but it's part of Wikipedia's excellent uh, piece on spherical coordinates. Uh, and it's just absolutely standard. So we're using theta to mean the angle downwards from the North Pole. We've got an azimuthal uh, angle phi. It's called, is that a phi or a psi? That's a I think it is. Anyway, so bog standard, um, bog standard spherical coordinates. Kill that. Okay, that's equal to flat space, of course. Whoops, that's equal to flat space. So there's nothing going on there. What I want to do is to modify that flat space. I want to warp it. I want to change it so that it reflects the 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 effect on geodesics on straight line paths or, or on, on, on geodesic paths of the objects in its vicinity. So I need to come up with a way of generalizing this. Well, let me just write down what we've got so far. We've got the fundamental tensor G uh, equals in this particular coordinate system minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 R squared. Oh no, it's just a 1, isn't it? 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, r squared, 0, 0, 0, 0, r squared, sine squared, theta. And what have we got here? This is the r, the theta, the, oops, r, the theta, no, that's time, r, theta, and phi. Time, r, theta, and phi. You'll notice it's diagonal. And I want to preserve that, if at all possible. Um, it's always possible to make these off-diagonal ele elements zero by, by judicious transform of the uh, coordinate system that we use. So I'm just going to take that for granted. We're going to have a diagonal system. Um, and I'll show you the, the system I'm going to consider. I'm going to consider a fundamental tensor. Well, I'm going to consider a line element, ds squared, equals some function of r times dt squared, and it's negative just so I can uh, keep track of the, uh, whether, whether things are time-like or space-like, plus another function of r, let me just write it, dr squared, plus r squared d theta squared, plus r squared sine squared theta d phi squared. I'm just going to consider line elements of this form. Make some observations. Number one, it's still going to be diagonal. I can get rid of off-diagonal elements, at least the t and the r components, quite easily, simply by sending t to a t plus some function function of r. If I, if I just redefine my time coordinate, I can get rid of that. So I'm going to assume that's already been done. What else have I got? 
the function I've got f of r I, I, I'm not considering f of r comma t I want to find a metric tensor that has no time components so I'm not going to use that I'm going to use that and of course here as well um, uh, I'm not going to consider functions of of, of, of time or anything else in here I, I, I'm, I'm not going to consider that what else have I got? I've got this rather peculiar term here, which is, well, it's not peculiar at all. It, it is perfectly, perfectly reasonable. It's the same form as you see in flat space. And the reason I can do that is that I can send, I can send r to r plus some function of r to make this all, to make this term correct for equatorial uh, circles or, or, or for circles around the origin. So if I go back to my little diagram here, shunk, and I've got my actually I'll I'll indicate on the uh, here we go indicate on this part. If I want to integrate around this circle here, uh, around the equator of this diagram here, and it doesn't come out to be two pi r for the circumference of a circle, well I'll just apply a transform to my radial coordinate here so that it does. So I'm going to assume that my radial coordinate is set up. So this is true. R is sometimes actually called the circumferential radius. Circumferential radius. In the sense that if I have a circle of, well I won't say radius R, but a, a circle of points at which r equals r0 and this thing here is my radial coordinate then I know that the length of that circle the circumference circumf, equals 2 pi r0 okay so I can I can get these points here uh, define this circle and it must be a circle because I'm not introducing any as a mutual dependence I can specify that the circumference of that circle equals 2 pi r0 exactly and I'll come back to this point again and again and again. So I'm considering this rather straightforward generalization of flat space. There's no time component in there. There's no there's no there's nothing other than a radial and a time component. Um, and I'm going to see what happens. Fine. I'm going to stop there. Stop.